In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to modify your pivot point and save it on your static meshes directly in UE5 without having to go back into your 3D modeling package and having to re-export and re-import. There are two ways to do this in UE5. One is dealing directly with the mesh and the other one is using the new modeling mode. And I'm going to show you both. So currently this mesh has a pivot point right in the center of the object. And if I were to delete this and redrag it into the level, it will be placed at its pivot point into the world on top of this ground plane. And if I were to redrag it again, for example, on top of here, so basically it's not very intuitive way of having this mesh be placed on the world. And this is all because this object was exported with the pivot point in the world origin. However, the object was placed below the ground plane. And then when you export, that's how it shows up in UE5. So instead of having to re-export this, let's go back to UE5. So the first option is going to be selecting the mesh that's inside your level and just simply right clicking on it to get access to the menu. And it's going to be right here on the pivot. And the two options you want to take a look at and use is set pivot offset here or set pivot offset here snapped. And I've experimented with both and they gave me exactly the same result. But I'm going to use the snapped version. So what this will do is it'll actually snap the pivot point onto the grid lines, not onto the vertices or anywhere else on the object, but at the grid lines themselves. So I'm going to choose the snapped version and the pivot point was snapped and placed right where I right clicked. So if I take a look at the front view or side view, let me zoom in and kind of take a look and see my pivot point is right here on the grid lines. Now it's important that if you use this option, you must have grid snapping enabled. Otherwise, if you use any of those two options that you have in the pivot, your pivot point will not be snapped and placed at the grid line. It will be placed right in between. And this is what you do not want. So if I do this again, it's placed right there. So you must make sure that you have grid snapping enabled. And now let me go ahead and do this one more time. Now, if I go back to the perspective view, here's my new pivot point. I can go ahead and move it from there. However, if I deselect the object, and reselected my pivot point is gets reset back into the center location uh, at a default where it was imported. So we need to save our pivot point after we place it, after we snap it. So I want to place my pivot point somewhere in the bottom of the object right here. So I can just right click on the corner, go to pivot, set pivot offset here snapped. Uh, actually it conflicts with the ground plane and the way I was moving, let me raise this object up. Just found through experimentation, you just need to, uh, don't have anything around it as you modify this. So let me do this again, right click on it, uh, right here in the bottom, go to pivot, and then set pivot offset here snapped. And it's still not right there, so let me do it one more time, get a little closer to the bottom. And now it's placed right here. And it's snapped to the bottom of the object. It's actually snapped on the grid. And my wall that I created, it was built to the grid lines. So it's aligned perfectly. So I know that's going to work. So now if I go to the orthographic viewport to take a look, it is right there. Perfect. Now I don't want to deselect it right now. I want to make sure I save that pivot point on this object right where it's at. So you can do this in perspective view or in the orthographic view. So after you've snapped your pivot point, come back again and simply right click one more time, go back to pivot and then set as pivot offset. Now, if you deselect it and reselect it, your pivot point will be placed right there. So you have to do this twice. You have to set the pivot point first by snapping it. And then you go through this menu again, and then you set it and it will be saved. The only downside for this first method for this first way is it will only apply to the mesh inside the scene. So this will be working now as long as you don't delete this object. However, if you redrag your object back in here, that object will continue to remain with a default pivot point location in the center. So that's the one downside to this method. And this is why I'm going to show you the second method without having to go back to 3D modeling package. The second way is to use the new modeling mode inside UE5. So I'm going to select the mesh that's already been placed. It's pivot point back in its default location in the center, how it was imported. And let's go to a different mode, use this drop down menu and choose modeling. This will give you access to a lot more tools. And this is uh, the new modeling tool set in UE5. Now you usually create modeling shapes, modify them and model them right here inside UE5. 
by using some of the primitive shapes right here, but you can actually do things to your existing geometry that's been placed in the level, to your existing static meshes that you imported from another 3D modeling package. So with this mesh selected, if I come over and uh, just scroll down until I get to transform and there's a pivot function right here, you can edit your mesh pivots. So let's go ahead and enable it. And now you can modify the pivot point on your existing mesh. So you have a few options here. If you drag this, this will begin to snap on the grid lines. It doesn't look like it's snapping because my grid snapping is very low. So if I go, let's say 10 and you drag it, you can see that it's actually snapping and it's snapping on the grid lines. Again, that's very important to point out. Let me go back up to, uh, let me go back down to five. So a uh, few options that you have here is the box position. So you can hit center, it will center the pivot point in the center. You can hit it to bottom, top, back, right, left, and so on. And you can actually set it to world origin, which will be somewhere right over there. Uh, I don't want that. So I can set it to the bottom. It will be positioned to the bottom of the object and it will be on the grid line. So I could save this one. That actually is not bad. But if you want to continue to modify, let's say in the corner, uh, if you hit right, it will be back to the center, unfortunately. So right here. So I don't want that to the back of the object now. So I'm going to set it to the bottom and then I'm going to simply drag one of these gizmos to the corner until I get it close enough to exactly where I want it. And let's take this one actually and drag it right there. Yep, it's right there in the corner on the grid line. And I can go ahead and take a look and make sure that it's exactly where I need it by zooming in. And yep, it's right there on the bottom grid line and on the bottom of the object. Now you could rotate this, but usually you just want to stick with the movement by dragging left to right. That's it. Uh, and not rotating. And of course, you use these gizmos to start with and then just reposition it manually if you need it. Then let's come back to a perspective view. And once you are done, just simply hit accept. Now there's a, a warning here that this tool will modify the selected static mesh asset. In our case, we just modify the pivot point, which is fine, but it will change the pivot point for everything, not just the one placed in the level. So let's hit accept. Now my pivot point is right here on the bottom. And you can see that actually the previous one changed because the position of the pivot point has been changed. And now if I just delete this one and this one right here, and I redrag it, my new pivot point is gets saved for all the new versions that I drag. So the modeling mode could give you a little bit more hardcore bake of the pivot point, exactly what you need for all of the future uh, assets that you drag from the content browser, not just the one placed in the level. And last, remember, when all else fails in UE5, you can go back to your modeling package and just re-export your mesh by modifying the pivot point. So if I wanted to do that, I would just simply come back. I would snap my pivot point to that bottom vertex this way it's not snapping to the grid line like it does in UE5. For example, if your mesh is not on the grid line and I would just modify the pivot point in Maya uh, and snap it right to the bottom. And then in order to make sure that that pivot point is saved exactly at that location when I import it, it would need to be placed. So the pivot point would need to be placed, snapped right here at the world origin. So that's how the object will be imported into UE5. And then you just simply export and re-import. And that's when all else fails in UE5. But I'll run through the first two commands. And that's going to be a lot faster for you, especially the modeling mode, to make sure that all the future instances of your mesh get the same pivot point saved.